I decided I was going to do a couple of mashes. I've, I actually started off just going to do two different types of mash just to give you the idea. And then I sort of got carried away and started doing all these different. Now, I don't expect you at home to say, oh, I'm going to do six different mashes tonight. You pick out the one you like or the two you like. <laughs> whatever you like. But the main thing about it is, as I said, I've got a few variations. The first one was actually my father's absolute favourite. And what this is, is this rumbly thumps. I know that sounds weird. My father was Scottish, remember? So of course it's a Scottish dish. And it's got neeps in them, which is Swedes. You know how you have bash neeps? And it has potatoes, so equal quantities of those. And I've just boiled those until they're tender. We mash them up with butter. I hate to tell you, butter is absolutely essential when it comes to mash of any sort. Well, I'm telling lies, you can do olive oil mash, but something like that, olive oil or butter, and quite a lot of it. And what I'll also add there, a little bit of milk, and we're gonna bring it back to the boil, this. And when the milk boils, we can then start mashing it again. So, this is equal quantities of sweet and a good potato, a good mashing potato. Ask your greengrocer what's the best. I always like Sebago. I think it's a good mashed potato. That's just me, but they will tell you. Now with this, rumble de thumps. The whole idea of it, it was supposed to, and I asked my father about it, and he says, well, his mother, my grandmother Annie, who was a terrific cook, she said, the Scottish call it rumble de thumps because you rumble it and then you thump it. I promise you, that's what he said. And I asked Annie and she said, yeah, yeah, no, that's what happens rumble and thump. Well, it's a bit like bash neeps. Bash neeps, you can also do that if you like, which is just Swedes and you bash them or mash them. So it's pretty similar, isn't it? That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Right, let's just have a taste for seasoning. Haven't finished yet. There's other things to go, it's all right. Well, that seasoning's good. Don't need to add anything to there. What I've got here is a mixture of sauteed Savoy cabbage and it's got some bacon and some onion in it. And I just sauteed it, sauteed the bacon, really finely chopped, and the very finely sliced onion. And then I added the cabbage, good knob of butter, and a bit of water to it. And I'm also gonna throw in some blanched peas. So I've blanched some frozen peas there, and I've got enough for about 300 here. Forget you, forget you won. <laughs> what happened to my cooking for one? And on top of that, we then put some tasty cheese and a bit of parmesan. I know I've got some parmesan there. Parmesan's not absolutely essential. What you could do with this is you certainly could just do tasty cheese. All righty, into the oven. Now, not too high up, and you just cook that until it's brown because the veggies are obviously hot. Next, I've cooked these. I've got about three tons of them. What I've done here is I've cooked my potatoes and all I'm doing is putting them back on the heat for a little bit, just to dry them out. And to that, we also add some milk, quite a lot of milk. We're also gonna add some cream and of course, butter. There is a dish called, so I'm, I'm not doing it today, but there is a dish called Paris Mash, which Guillaume in Sydney made famous in Australia. I don't think it originally came from him. I think it came from Paris. The point of the story is the Paris Mash is half potato and half butter. So it is rather rich. Beautiful. Now, let's taste that for seasoning. A fresh spoon, please. Now, I know people put them through rices and make them really smooth. I prefer the old fashioned style that the mum used to do. Not saying it was lumpy, but it had some texture. A little bit of salt and we're looking pretty good. What I've got here, guys, is I've got 75 mils of milk, 75 mils of olive oil, one large clove of garlic, and a good pinch of saffron. Now, you don't want to put all of that in there. You can keep that. But it's saffron thread, so it's a good pinch of them. And you bring it to the simmer. Not boil, you bring it to the simmer. Now, if you have saffron mash somewhere, and it's bright yellow, you know very well that they've put saffron colouring, not true saffron. So now this one needs to be a little bit smoother. Right, saffron mash. See, it's pale yellow, it's nice. As I said, if it's bright, forget it kids. Now, next, the wonderful Irish champ. I love this. This is just real old fashioned. 
good Irish cooking. Very simple. Once again, a little bit of that mix. Lots of spring onions. Actually, when I was in Ireland, I loved it because even if you went out for breakfast, they had 30 different varieties of, of potatoes. I remember saying to a chef there, I said, what happened if you didn't serve all these different types of potatoes? He said, I'd lose my job. I'm exaggerating when I say 30, but certainly four or five just for breakfast. Anyway, this is one of their famous ones. Champ, spring onion, a little bit of that cabbage mix with the bacon. Of course, you can leave the bacon out of that cabbage mix if you want to. Now, the secret of champ, you put a little hollow in there. Guess what you put in there? You put another big dollop of butter. And that is the secret. And the secret is supposedly you eat it from the inside out. Now, fully loaded. Now this is an American variation. Spring onions, cabbage, bacon, peas, tasty cheese. I had this in a steakhouse in Chicago and I said to the waiter, now what's in that? And I, and I, I thought it was funny because it's very much an old Australian saying, he said, everything but this kitchen sink. So <laughs> it's pretty close. Now, of course we need some mash to go with it. Right, just mix that up. Make sure you mix that in well because you've got that sour cream, you've got the other cream, you've got everything. And you have to check for seasoning. Smallest amount. So this is a steakhouse speciality. You serve this with your steaks. Well, you don't have to, you serve it with anything you like. Here's some other ideas. Tapenade, good tapenade like from my mates from the Hunter Valley, which is an olive tapenade, that, that's lovely in it. Grain mustard, that also goes well in mash. And pesto is absolutely one of my favorites. So that goes really well. And in fact, we might make some pesto while we're waiting. So just some homemade pesto would be best, along with mash. Now I don't need to taste this because there's seasoning in that pesto, so it'll be fine. I like the tapenade one too, I'm not making that today, but I do like it, but you have to like olives. Olives and anchovies and all those good things, you know, all those things that I absolutely love. Right, on top of that, some parmesan. Now what I've got here is my old mum's favourite, which is a really old family dish, and I think we all made them. When I say we all, all our parents made this, and it's just carrot and parsley. Now, only in the winter, because that's when the parsnips are at their best, otherwise they can be terribly woody, and we don't want that. So equal quantities of carrot, equal quantities of parsley. Butter, of course. Now, I know you're sitting at home saying, oh, you're using a lot of butter. Hey, remember I'm making a whole lot of mash here. It's not just for one, but you do need a good dollop of butter. But you can cut it back if you like, but I do love a good dollop, I have to be honest. So we just mash that. Mum used to always mash it just with a fork. I like it a bit smoother, I have to be honest. When I say I like it a bit smoother, I'm not saying it should, still should be chunky. It should have a bit of chunky to it. And I'll follow Mum's principle too, I will. And once again, because she was half Irish, my mother, so. But she had about half, certainly had Irish blood. We will follow her principle with a dollop of butter on top. And out come the rumbly thumps, which will be very hot. And there we have a plethora of mashes. So what have we got? Carrot and parsnip with some butter. Rumbly thumps, which is swede and potato and a bit of cabbage and bacon and little bits and pieces. Pesto mash, which is my homemade pesto. Fully loaded, which has got everything but the kitchen sink. Saffron, which is mildly coloured, but it's got a lovely flavour. And then the famous Irish champ. So as I said, at the risk of repeating myself, guys, if you can't find a mash out of those that makes your day, poor you. <laughs>